So I'm Josh Tenorio, I'm the Lieutenant Governor of Guam. I'm an openly gay man, I'm an elected office holder, I'm the first uh, gay Lieutenant Governor in the United States, which is pretty cool. Uh, and uh, I'm a big advocate of equality, I'm a co-founder of Equality Guam, which is a nonprofit that is dedicated to ensuring that there is equality in uh, public policy and programs that we, uh, in particular, we are very interested in making sure that LGBTQ persons on Guam have access to health care, to housing, um, that families are protected, and that we will oppose any efforts to um, take any of those, any of the progress or to prohibit LGBTQ people or their family members from getting services or being treated the same as anybody else. When I grew up, I grew up in the late 80s uh, or in the mid to late 80s and I graduated in 1991. I feel, you know, it's a much different place 20 years ago than it is today. I guess you know, when you have people that say, you're not gay, are you? I mean, how are you supposed to answer that question? You know, if I say yes, then I'm disappointing them. If I say no, then I'm lying. You know, I mean, it really was, um, it was uh, a big thing. I think maybe sometimes I think it was, um, you know, the uh, religion, it's not okay to be gay in the Catholic faith. I think it is right now, as long as you don't have a partner or if you don't, uh, have any relationships, um, but it's really impractical to think that an individual can't love whoever they want to love and follow the life that they want to live. Later on in life, when I started coming out to my friends, especially when I told my mom, um, I realized that it wasn't really going to be a big thing. I mean, there's people that don't like um, our lifestyle, they don't like that we exist, but we're here. Uh, we're not going anywhere and I think that we deserve the same chance at happiness than everybody else. I think that it, it, it is uh, more widely accepted, but I tell you that the opposition to it is, uh, is still fierce. Uh, and for me, I always kind of think about the younger people that maybe don't have um, that support. Uh, maybe they are feeling the same way I did, scared. And so I, I'm always trying to make sure that younger people can see that they have role models, they have people that have been in their shoes that can really succeed and win. And I think that's very, that to me, that's the most important thing is not only to the young people, but even to their parents and people who love them, uh, people who don't understand uh, maybe our lifestyle, maybe they have uh, children that they suspect are gay and they don't know how to deal with it. I want them to see a bunch of us that we can thrive and I want the kids to see that confidence. That, to me, that's the, probably the most important thing that I could do as, as a gay man and as a gay leader on the island. Well, you know what, if you look at, um, there's still a large number of um, LGBTQ youth that become homeless. There's still a whole bunch of them that become alienated with their families. Um, there's some that come from a very socially conservative or religious backgrounds and it's a conflict for them. Uh, and so to me, the big threats are making sure that um, uh, these young people or these people, whoever they are, have other people they can rely on. So, you know, we see a lot of um, their suicide, suicide um, with LGBTQ youth, both Guan Guam and in the States is higher than um, the other groups that are around that, you know, that the other straight people, I guess. Uh, same thing with substance abuse, you know, these harmful things that are happening because maybe young people don't have ways to cope, they don't have the support systems. Those are, I would say, still big threats. And um, the challenge is trying to make sure that we can reach out to them and provide um, options for them to come in and try and get that safe space. All of us were made by God. Uh, we are all given the right to self-determination, to uh, live the best lives that we can without harming or hurting anybody. And I think that's the thing. If, if you can live your life and you don't harm, you don't hurt anybody, you follow the law, follow the rules, it shouldn't matter your sexual orientation for you to live your life. Uh, and I, I do see um, people still struggling with it, but I have to say that 2021 is a much better place 
um, than uh, 1991. For sure, BJ Cruz, and I had uh, the good fortune of working for him in the legislature. And I'll be honest with you, when uh, I worked for him, it was then that I realized that, uh, you know, you need to make sure that um, when you're upfront and honest with people, most of the time they don't really care. I have to say though that I was in, um, in middle school when he was appointed to be a judge. And if you look back in the news stories, you'll see that the community, at least some segments of the, of the um, religious conservative community of ours, came out ra rather um, harshly against him. And I think that it caused, for me, there was a little trauma there, just seeing how somebody that um, is being appointed to a judge, and although he was able to survive that and become a very good judge, but seeing that kind of animosity and hatred, even for me, it kind of like um, set me back. It, 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 it scared me. I see elements in the community that are just like that. And I think for me, it's my job to, if they start coming up against um, us, it's my job to lead the charge against them. So um, I would say that the big thing that's so important, not only for the island, but the country, is passing the Equality Act. Now, the, the House of Representatives have passed the Equality Act, but the Senate doesn't look like they're going to do it. The Equality Act uh, protects uh, LGBTQ people from workplace discrimination. It ensures access to health care. Uh, it ensures um, that we're able to live our lives. It's so important and I'm grateful that here um, some of the past leaders that Senator B.J. Cruz, Senator Nerissa Underwood, who um, passed marriage equality in our statute, um, you know, they've made some good, um, good progress, but it's not done. The work is not done. There still um, is no clear protection from housing discrimination. There still is a gap in health care and access to health care, especially for trans people. Trans people have an incredibly difficult time. Um, even the humiliation they face when they have to show their IDs um, and the sex on the ID is different perhaps than the gender that they identify with. Those are big issues and they're not simple issues either. You know, they're, um, if you look in national politics, it's creating a big division. Uh, I just hope that we can get that legislation passed. Uh, and I'm certainly in favor of local legislation that will advance different pieces of it, but we do need some constitutional and some federal protections. And although there's progress with the Biden administration, it's not a guarantee. If it swings the other way um, and things can easily be receded, then we're gonna be back in the same place. I'd say come out sooner. You know, come out sooner. Although, um, you know, I came out in uh, in different um, times to different people. I really think I would have been much happier as a openly gay man back then. I think I would have probably told them you have the courage to to um, uh, see it head on, and you're not going to regret it.